and, and enjoy the preseason for Madden 20. Let's let's get it. I want to play the full game. Hmm. Well, we'll chase the pants. We're gonna wear all black. I set the season to all pro. see Nick Foles and the Jacksonville Jaguars as they match up with the second year man Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens I'll see you again at halftime as we preview some of the action coming up on Sunday but for now it's Thursday night football and on the call as always it's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis Coach, the rain is falling, the fans are soaked, but here's the bottom line. We've got football at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. The two teams Under season, let's get it! Respective tunnels a minute ago to the approval of this Baltimore crowd. They're all set as their Ravens will let's match go. up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. 2019 season. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and we finally made it, partner, through the winter, through the spring, now into the summer, and football finally back. And during that time off, we all cherish our vacation time, but admit it, you're the same as me. When you were working out, when you were doing things, you thought about football, didn't you? And you couldn't wait to be back up here again. Hmm. Or teal and black ones, but I like the white ones though. I don't know why you're doing that. You're playing in the rain. Let's go. Let's get this game on the road. And rainy night, and off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. This will be taken to the back of the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Nick Foles, the man that the Jags are hoping can get them over the hump in 2019. Super Bowl MVP a couple of seasons ago. Made seven starts if you include the playoffs for the Eagles last year, winning five of them. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. But one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. And he here. got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it, but drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been them. better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. Good as a Fourth sack. and one. Yeah, how about Good that? defense. Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Tyler Irvin back deep. Damn. Let's go, boys. Bring it up. Here we go. 
trying to... Oh, shit. Now a play fake here on first down. That's going to be Are you serious? He dropped it? Incomplete. A.J. Bouye, the fine cornerback, there to make the play defensively. Yeah, that this certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice, getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you look got out of the, the end zone. Bit, loosen them up, have them yeah. Their heels. And he's going to get this up to the 24-yard line. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. Mark Ingram for the first down. Get this one across the 35. Another nice game. 13 yards that time and another first down. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they scouted the line of scrimmage, but their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. Ingram again, a first down carry. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got the artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Oh, he dropped they it. They to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a it great was not. play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Now Jackson, and the Jags get to him as wow. down he goes. And their inaugural sack of the game coming from an unlikely source. You mean it wasn't a linebacker? It wasn't a defensive end? It was somebody like you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a surprise for the offense. That's not what they normally get when they think about pressure. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head hey, coach, good defense. can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Now the offensive unit now for the Jaguars. And here comes Leonard Fournette, the big, and I mean big. Gets the ball inside. People make this or not, and he has enough speed to get to the perimeter and outrun defensive backs. When he puts it all together, he makes the Jaguars oh, offense never very difficult. Big yardage after the catch. That one winds up going for 36. I know we love our jobs, but pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. The big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline. Are you serious? They're fired out. That's a big game. Pass. There he goes, right side. Touchdown, Jaguars. Leonard Fournette, 44 yards. And the Jags have taken the early lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. So the drive there, they went 80 yards in three plays. And the finishing touch was that nice long run into the end zone. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. 68. You Walk that, your you guy. First down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping... This big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. Right, didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. 
eluding the pressure right. And he can't oh. find a receiver, and he's brought down. Miles Jack with a sack. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. 21 yards. Well done on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense. First down and 10. Very good starting field position for the Jaguars offense as they come up first and 10. They begin with a carry for Blue. And he'll get three up to midfield. And here are the Raven defensive starters. Let's go to the middle of the Baltimore defense where Brandon Williams holds court. And we often talk about how difficult it is to stop a big-time runner. How about trying to stop a big-time guy in the middle who wreaks havoc both with pass rush and against the run? Brandon Williams went to his first Pro Bowl at the end of the 2018 season. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Here's Foles. He's got the hook up to Lee. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 18 yards on his first catch of the game. It's a first down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you at important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers putting their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning yeah, on first. that other sideline. As a play car, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. The 22 is the line to gain here on third down. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. And an alley to run. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Apart from Kyler Murray, not too many mobile QBs in this year's rookie class, but some good scrambling there to get the first. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits, and these creases like they were able to explore right there. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Offensively, they like their situation, so they tried to take a shot downfield, but no one was open. So it was tucking in run time, and he picks up it. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Shane Ray. The blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. Well, if you're going to throw the ball on first and goal from the two, the worst thing that should result is an incompletion for you offensively. Ain't going nowhere. This is a different type of football. Back in my day, first and goal from the two, a lot of big people with big neck rolls, they were on the field trying to ram it into the end zone. And now the first throw for the backup quarterback. Fine work by the Baltimore defense to help bring up fourth down. Well, so a drive that spans all that time, and yet you may only come away with three points here. Well, your defense, all right, they actually like these long drives. They get to rest over on the sidelines for a while. But when you're not finishing with points in terms of touchdowns, that's frustrating. They've got to figure out how to close out these long drives and get sixes instead of threes. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, uh, you like Come that on. one? Well, what does that mean, break out the... Just because you break, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. The drive begins with a run by Dixon. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Are you serious? No Why is no one blocking? He goes down. 
I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this foot. Under pressure wow. again. I can't get anywhere. He goes again. This guy keeps Josh getting on the line. In there to record the second sack of his young NFL career. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here we go on fourth down with Griffin. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. Boy, a real head scratcher there. And the Jags take over in terrific field position. I don't know why you would do that. It's almost guaranteed points the other way. I mean, I get it if it's a late game situation, maybe even fourth and inches. But boy, that's a huge risk to take. Yeah, now they're set up in prime position going the other way. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Cunningham. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Minshew sets to throw. Nowhere to go. Here he lost the football. Yes. It's picked up by the Ravens. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. You know, if this is the regular season partner, we'd be talking about just how costly a mistake that was, but probably good for him to get it out of his system right now. Just hope for him and the team it's not a sign of things to come. Yeah, without a doubt. Plus, got to worry about making the team. Those types of errors don't help you. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second down. It's Dixon. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of Down. They go play action here on first down. And he gets it down a yard or two first shy down. of the 30 before RG3. he's three. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. The Ravens moving quickly here as the clock runs. Yeah, that was a safety that came through and made the play. But there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker. We see a lot of that today. First, more first down. Time we do indeed a big hit for a loss. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Yeah, give him four yards there, it'll be second and six. To throw on second and six. Griffin stepping up, he'll try and run. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go, go. in this first half. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. 
On first and goal, Dixon. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. That's going to go as a loss of six, and it'll set him back for second down. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. They go play action. Griffin. And he's got it. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Hayden Hurst in the final seconds of the first half. And the Ravens have cut it to within a score. Well, Charles, you said it after the fourth down stop. That's almost guaranteed points the other way, and that comes to fruition with the touchdown. Well, the unnecessary risk did come back to haunt them, didn't it? End up getting those points that I predicted that they were going to give up because it's guaranteed points if you don't make that play. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Short kick here. Fielded about the 17. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. They'll throw now on the final play. Flush to his right. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. So we have reached halftime in our first preseason matchup of the year. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Good half, Coach. good half. All right, Brandon, thanks better. very much. We'll get back good to you hell. and Charles in just a moment. But first, let's give everybody a look at what's coming up this weekend in the NFL. In our game, the defenses look to be ready for the regular season. Maybe not the offenses just yet, but still a half to go as we get you back out to Brandon God. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. Probably not likely to see many starters in the second half as we get back at it underway in this preseason opener. This will be taken in at the one. And his guys are going to start their drive right at the 20-yard line. Here's the Jaguars' defense as they get ready to set up shop. And they have been disruptive in the backfield. And how often when we see this, as we look at some of these highlights, is it just better players getting in there versus scheme that is defeating the offense? It's a great question. And I think oftentimes we rely on scheme. We fall back and say, well, the scheme broke down rather than giving credit to the players making plays. But when the scheme does break down, you're looking at oftentimes just being overloaded. Too many guys coming from one side or one particular area, then you can actually block it. You know, if there's two guys there to block them, they'll bring three, and that third guy will get through. So when you want to max protect there, meaning getting everyone in, your whole offensive line, your tight end, and your running backs, trying to make sure that you're never outnumbered by the defensive guys coming in. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Chris Moore was the intended target, and it's third and five. What we got? What we got? What we got? And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Give the sack there to Jake Ryan. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Now, meanwhile, they go for it on fourth down, and my goodness, incomplete. A surprising move to go for it, predictably, at least somewhat predictably. It doesn't pay off. And boy, possession here turns over with the football already being in the red zone. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. A solid pickup of 12 yards, and now they're knocking on the door. Good push up front in that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front. And they're able to get their pad. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. 
Chris Wormley showing his strength and quickness there, a loss of four. Well, that was point counterpoint, wasn't it? They decided to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Ten yards on the touchdown pass. And the Jaguars had six to their lead. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him. Let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? R-A-C. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we set? Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 45. He had his eyes on the end zone. He got close. At least he set the offense up nicely, but he's probably mad he didn't take that one to pay dirt. I agree with you, and you know he's going to get teased because he didn't get it all the way into the end zone. But if they don't score now, if they don't get a touchdown, he won't just get teased. They'll be glaring at him. How'd you not score? I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. The Jaguars on third down. Two for five to this point. They're looking at a third and goal here. From the gun, Minshew to throw. This is caught. And he will get this end of the end I don't end understand how to get Jaguar wide open. Touchdown. That's the one you like From four That's yards the one you like out. And the Jags take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling. Because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. And a second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Hayden Hurst, former first-round pick, the intended target. And it's third and short. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get This is intercepted. Picked off around the 27. Pick six, baby. Well, I tell you, Brandon, this ball's intercepted, but it is third down. So the silver lining is that since this is so far down the field and there wasn't a big run back associated with it, really this kind of works like a punt. It's not an altogether bad result. That will throw downfield is taken in by his running back and brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. He's coming. Double up, double up. He's good. He's good. On second down. 
It's Cunningham, and he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Now this is brought in by Pryor. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. The previous play, they barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Now they pick up over 30 yards. That's a real nice job right there, working the middle of the field, working against those safeties. And you know, partner, if you get your hips turned the wrong way, big plays can result. And a big play resulted right there. He'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one. It might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground, and it's picked up by the Ravens. Let's go. Let's go. And maybe that one caused by the weather. Of course, the rain coming down. Charles, can you maybe, when you're carrying that football, grip it too tight in the rain? I think that you can, and it's such a delicate balance, too, because when you grip it so tight, sometimes it'll slip out from your body. You squeeze it too hard, and it'll pop out on its own. I've actually had running backs talk to me about that, that when they've tried too hard, even in perfect conditions, the ball gets away from them. They've got to find that good balance, carrying it firmly, yet at the same time under control. RG3 going to bring the Ravens up first and 10 at their own 13. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he takes us across the 15 to the 17. Call that a gain of five as the clock ticks inside of two minutes to go now in the third. Well, they did throw interceptions on their last two drives, so no surprise at all they decided to start it with a running play. I'm actually a little bit surprised, though, that they got as much out of it as they did. Yeah, a decent little gain. Puts them in a pretty good spot for second down. But well, these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off at the 20. Then he will bring it back to about the 11 yard line. Like, why is my guys not running around? I don't understand. Like, really? And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turned to block, find a spot. And now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. On first down, it's Cunningham. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. From 10 yards out. And the Jags take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide that they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Ravens offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. They trail here by 24 points. Got to get going soon, you'd have to think, as they come up first and 10. They'll start the drive with Dixon. And they're able to swarm him behind the line. And his rough night continues. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. 
I don't think any of us were surprised that they decided to start this drive on the ground after the last two drives ended in interceptions. Unfortunately, though, not a lot going on on that first play. Yeah, I think the anticipation was felt also by the defense. here on this Thursday night matchup. And that'll do it for the end of the third quarter. You're watching preseason football on EA Sports. The last run got a couple. here, second and eight. Here's Griffin. And that is in. Just nothing there again. He's been sacked multiple times. We've seen the interceptions, of course. Uh, he's really been through the ringer, hasn't he? And what we've seen is a defense is way back, really in sync. The front putting on the pressure, the backside being ball hawks and picking passes off. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. McSorley sets to pass. And he goes down able to get to him the Ravens go for it but come up empty and the Jags take over in terrific field position well at this stage of the game in the second half down three scores I guess they felt like they needed to push and let's face it with this deficit if they give up another score here after they didn't get it does it really matter right. it really doesn't they had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. That was well defended, and while it was a completion, it resulted in a loss of yardage. It's really, really hard for a running back to think to himself, I probably should have just dropped it and saved the yardage. It goes against the entire training that he's had his whole career. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. When this offense gathers to watch I don't know the tape, why I got they're going to like a lot of what they case. saw. They put up big numbers, but they might fast forward through that last play. Oh, there won't be any fast forwarding, partner. You I've missed sat it. in those sessions before. You end up spending more time on the bad plays than you do on the good ones. It's just the nature good of coaches. Deal. But I know sitting in that room, when you've had a big game, the night that they've had, you don't want to hear that. You just want to focus on the good stuff. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and ten. Here's McSorley to throw. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. DJ Hayden right there on the coverage. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe you can expect that he can't find oh my God. To go and he goes down. I think normally we would talk about this more with basketball players and football players, but let's adopt it in this case. He's a stat sheet stuffer. Had the interception earlier, now a sack. But he just needs a touchdown for the trifecta. That's about all he needs, and he's going to go for it. Well, that one sailed a bit, but the catch is still made. They'll wind up with 17 on that one, but they're still a bit short here for fourth. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent game. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. I love those plays, fourth and one. That's who wants it more, this time the offense. Yeah, there's a lot of hooting and hollering in there, right? A lot of contact and a lot of collisions as they try and find some space. Who's going to drop their hips, gain leverage, and move the other side backwards? We saw it there for the offense getting it done. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. This Good pass catch. into the arms of Sneed, and he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. This quarterback now, just two of five since coming on, but he does have a first down here. That should be passing, really cut him off. There. And that'll bring up second down. 
another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Second and ten, it's McSorley. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. I guess at this point, Charles, heck, why not take some shots? I would agree with that totally because a big play can't hurt at all. Heck, you might get a pass interference call out of it. Somehow the ball might get tipped up and you come down with it. Might not do too much for the result of the game, but it could add to your stats. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. As far as time. Come on, block. To him as like, what are you standing there for? And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. The second down attempt there, knocked down as it leaves the quarterback's hand, and it's incomplete. DJ Hayden right there on the coverage. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can... And he will find Hurst in the end zone. Touchdown, Ravens. Hayden Hurst. Ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game. Oh, damn and the time. Ravens get a bit closer. And that was really just a great battle for that football on both sides. The result is a touchdown. Ordinarily, I'd like to say it was a win-win, but it really wasn't because the defender, while he was there with excellent coverage, he didn't get the benefit, did he? But he's not going to get chewed up in film No, he was right there. They'll tell him, okay, of course you need to knock the ball away, but they won't be too upset with him. He did his job for the most part. Well, it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure, but that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion while you have more than one play ready because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. Here's a great example right there. Now a hit and a loose football. Go, go. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, four quarters, hours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line is really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision. Yes and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. Good defense. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident... Oh, my God. Taken down. Really, back man? his own seven. Dwayne Smoot able to run him down for a loss of 12 that time. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage. Not a great start. He sets to fire deep. And it's knocked away. Fucking like double. He pulled my, both of my guys. Looking to erase a two-score deficit here in the fourth quarter. Going for some big plays. Yeah, they certainly were. They just died in one shot, didn't they? Forget trying to move the ball downfield in small little increments. Let's go for the big one. But how about the defense playing situational football, looking at the scoreboard and realizing what can hurt us most? The deep shot. They played it well. That's good for 28 yards. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. 
What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like an I-4 rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Now, really? Fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. The Ravens go for it, but come up empty. And the Jags take over in terrific field position. So now with a little over two minutes to play, the road back gets very difficult. Difficult, but still not impossible if they go ahead and play this thing out. Now the defense has to come up big. They've got to go for a strip of the football on each and every snap to try and give themselves a chance. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches, and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with a lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that, plus three. On second down now, it's Cunningham. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. DJ Chark, the intended target, and it's third down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays, and when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give them confidence and let it not get through. 90 wolf. Come on. Two. Looking to throw on first and ten. Here's McSorley. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Throwing is McSorley. He's going to let it fly. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's McSorley now, third and long. Now a desperation throw deep downfield, and that is incomplete. Two seconds left on the clock. Here's Sam Cook now, standing right on his own five yards. And they're going to fake it from deep in their own territory. 
Oh, but this is going to backfire as it's intercepted. Oh, Picked off at the 48, and that will ride a finish I got to figure out how to game. shut so down the run. I got to figure out how to Jacksonville, and they were booing stop Charles the run by game. A big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime and obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe but, doing the things, those two things all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. I just need to get those two things accomplished. And, so that'll do it for and, us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our Thank crew. you guys for sticking with me Gordon. for the, at least this, almost this the hour. Right and I appreciate it. Hit a like if you want more Madden 20 uh, franchise mode. Good night, everybody. Subscribe for more games or any other games for this Let's Play channel. And I catch you guys on the next one. See ya.